Okay, guys, I think my streaming, I think my streaming platform just like went kaput, unfortunately. <laughs> so I won't have the actual visuals up here, but I'll walk you guys through everything that we're talking about. So what we're talking about before we got so rudely cut off from my streaming platform <laughs> is advanced. Like once you're in this advanced stage of um, your intermittent fasting journey and what you'll want to be focusing on for how long your fast should be. So rarely does that longer, rarely does that next step mean going longer with your intermittent fast. Oftentimes what we're focused on instead is just making sure that we're adjusting the intermittent fast to actually fit your goals. So with uh, going back to the weight loss example, um, when you are looking to achieve a weight loss goal, we need to balance out the intermittent fast with the meals itself. And oftentimes I see in the Facebook group, in YouTube comments, and just all across the internet, people saying like, oh, when I went from a 16 hour fast to an 18 hour fast really recently, I was actually able to break through my plateau and now I've recently lost five pounds. That is probably going to be the case in the beginning because you're just simply eating less because you are inherently not going to be able to eat as much when you are going from a 16 to an 18 or a 20 hour fast. So yeah, you probably will break through the plateau because now you're just in an even bigger state of semi-starvation or um, not eating enough for your body's needs. So yes, it will result in a temporary weight loss, but eventually again, that will plateau. And again, you will have trouble achieving your goals because you never actually address the thing that was holding you back in the first place. And that was the types of meals that you're breaking your fast with. So that's why with our intermittent fast, um, we don't want to just have, keep making it longer and longer, especially if your goal is weight loss, because that doesn't allow for you to actually address what's going to be holding you back and achieving your goals long-term. I can't see it. I'll put this somewhere so you guys can find this information as well, but we're going to go through it. <laughs> um, so now we get into like the troubleshooting. Now, let's say you are, you bet you're at this advanced state of intermittent fasting um, and you have, you're trying to figure out like what fasting length is going to work best for you. This is where we need to troubleshoot and understand the different types of things that could be affecting your fasting length. So the big one here that a lot of people don't think about when they're beginners, but you will notice very quickly as time goes on. But the biggest thing is getting too full where you aren't able to eat all of your body's nutrient needs within that eating window. So in this circumstance, like let's say you um, have calculated your protein needs, you need 100 grams per day, you have an 18-hour eating window, you just find you can't fit that in. You are just so... Um, overly full that you can't fit that food in with that smaller eating window. This happened to myself personally. This actually happened to Trevor, my husband. I had him on the live stream. I think it was like three or four weeks ago. And we're talking about how for him, he has very high protein needs because he has a lot of muscle that needs to be maintained. So for him, we actually had to open up his eating window, shorten his fast so that we could get enough of the protein in during his eating window in order to actually see the, the benefits of the food that he needed to be eating. So if you're too full, then what you'll want to do is widen your eating window, shorten your fast. So if like you're at an 18 hour eating window, find that or 18 hour fast, you find that you can't eat enough protein or enough nutrients to support your specific goals, try dropping down to a 16 hour fast or a 15 hour fast. Play around with it until you find that sweet spot for you where you're able to balance out the fast with the eating window as well. So we talked about not losing weight. The other aspect, um, another layer of troubleshooting, not losing weight with intermittent fasting. If, as long as you are already even like at a 12 hour fast or even 14 hour fast, I rarely say that this is the time to then um, take a look at extending your fast. Instead, what we need to do is focus on the eating window and eating the right types of foods to support that intermittent fast. Even if you're only at a 12 hour fast, if you are focused on those three meal structure while also eating the foods that support your goals with the protein, fat, and fiber approach, you should be able to be making progress with your goals. Um, so if you are not, then that's a big sign that we really need to be addressing your meals. You're probably not eating enough protein. Maybe you're eating the too much, too many and, or the wrong types of carbs for your body specific needs. Maybe even eating too much of the fats for your body specific needs. I did a live stream two weeks ago, I believe on um, the how much fat you guys should be eating dependent on your goals. So if you guys want to check that out, it's a really, really important one. One that I think doesn't get addressed enough on YouTube. So make sure you check that one out. So you want to make sure you're first taking a look at that before you address the fasting length. 
fasting length when it comes to weight loss really should be one of the last things that you're considering. Instead, first the food, then taking a look at perhaps the exercise and also the sleep, which all the things that we talk about a lot. Um, hungry during the fast. So the flip side, we talked about too full being one issue we need to troubleshoot. Now there's also being hungry during the intermittent fast. This is more of an issue for if you are a beginner to intermittent fasting. It's typically a sign that you are not metabolically flexible yet. So that means your body has not learned really well how to burn fat as fuel during the intermittent fast. So you're riding these unstable blood sugar levels. So what you want to do in this beginning point, if you are um, finding that you are getting hungry during the intermittent fast, we need to provide some type of fuel that's in the fat form so your body can get used to burning fat as fuel. And then you can always play around with how much fat or how little fat you're going to be adding in during the fast uh, from where your goals proceed from there. So this is where using keto coffee is a great tool. I actually don't have any right now. This is just regular decaf coffee with some nut pods. I've personally switched over again, always changing what um, your strategies are dependent on your goals. I personally switched over to using either just like a splash of heavy cream or some nut pods during the fast. Um, if I'm going to be adding anything, and that's because for myself, I found that I was getting too full and I needed to get nutrients from protein instead of just the fat. So I decreased the fat in my coffee so that I can get enough nutrients with my food during my eating window. But if your, your troubleshooting area is that you're getting too hungry, then that's where playing around with some fat in your coffee during the fast can be really helpful. I do have a YouTube video on all the things you can add to your coffee, um, dependent on what your goals are. Uh, so if you want to check that out, just type like Autumn Bates Coffee Intermittent Fasting. <laughs> do you guys like my typing action? Um, type that into YouTube and that video should pop right up. It's one of my more popular videos and it goes over like everything that you could add into your coffee um, during the fast. So headaches or muscle cramps is another troubleshooting issue. It's something that we have talked quite a bit about as well. It doesn't have as much to do with the fasting length, but I just wanted to throw that in there because a lot of people, even if they've been using fasting for a while, notice that they're getting headaches or muscle cramps and it might come on suddenly. Typically, this is an issue of too little water or too little electrolytes or both. So you guys know that we talk a lot about remove or that when you're in the fasted state, you lose a lot of water, you lose a lot of electrolytes, which is why obviously I love Element, talk a lot about them using high quality salt. Um, so just making sure you're actually adequately rehydrating and um, using the rule of thumb we talked about for half your body weight in ounces of water and also getting enough sodium for your body's needs, which I know is something that sounds strange, but when you are fasting and when you are focused on protein, fat and fiber, lower processed carbohydrate foods, all of that makes it so your, your sodium needs actually go up quite a bit. So a lot of research around this and you will notice it pretty instantly when your headaches and your muscle cramps improve. So those are other things that you just need to make sure you are adjusting for. I go over that in the 21 day intermittent fasting program. Um, I have a blog post as well on um, electrolytes. If you want to check that out, just type Autumn Bates electrolytes on Google. And that'll, that blog post will pop right up. I'm so sad you guys can't see the visual that I'm looking at because it is very helpful. But again, next time there won't be some technical issues. <laughs> so then the other big area we need to discuss that um, is, is a big question mark for a lot of people are longer fasts. So we're talking about OMAD, alternate day fasting, or lately I've heard a lot of people asking about 36 hour fasts. Let me take a sip of water before we get into this big one. Okay, so I've already discussed why I'm not really a big fan of the longer daily fast. So like the 20 or 22 hour fast or OMAD. That's just because a lot of people really struggle with actually getting all their nutrient needs in during such a small period of time. So longer fasts can generally be better from a gut health perspective but if you're shortening your window to a two or four hour fasting length with like OMAD, for example, or maybe two mad, this can actually make the gut health portion even worse because now you're shoving so much food into your GI tract, has to process so much food at once that it could, even though you're getting the benefits of a longer fast, you're actually throwing a lot of pressure onto your GI tract and you're not going to be able to really feel as great. You'll probably feel more bloated. Your GI tract will be more slowed down not really ideal. So that's where I'm, why I'm not a big fan of OMAD, of OMAD 
especially from a weight loss perspective too, because you're not addressing what's really the issue. Um, alternate day fasting. I don't think this one is as big now. I think it's kind of fallen out of favor, thankfully. But if you guys have not heard of alternate day fasting, it's where you fast for an entire, I guess it's more like almost 36 hours or like 30 hours. So you fast for an entire day and then you eat normally or like you don't fast. So you eat, you can eat all day on the following, the next day. So this was really popular, I would say like five or 10 years ago. Um, my concern with this is that it's often, it doesn't mimic real life. <laughs> and by real life, I mean like real actual social life. That's something that you can do sustainably. You could probably do alternate day fasting for like a week, maybe two weeks, maybe a month if you're really disciplined, but eventually there's going to be like a birthday party. You're going to last minute get invited to go out to eat with friends and you don't want your social life to suffer as from this alternate day fasting schedule because it's not necessary. You don't need to be doing alternate day fasting to see those benefits. In fact, it could be detrimental because you're going one full day every other day without actually eating enough protein specifically for your body's needs. But it also could be not great from a mental health aspect, a cultural aspect. We are social creatures. We do like to share meals with other people. And if you remove that, it's just not really a realistic aspect to um, viewing us as like the social human creatures that we are. So we need to make sure that even with um, these extended fasts, alternate day fasts, it's, just, it's really just not something that I would recommend. Now, extended fasts. I don't think as many people are concerned about alternate day fast, but the extended fast, the 36 hour, three day fast, or, or, you know, anything that's going to be longer than just the one day of fasting, this is more of an extended fast. And lately I've gotten more questions about this. This is something that, um, early on, I like, let's say again, like eight or 10 years ago, I saw a lot more people interested in these extended fasts because there can be some good health benefits used on the occasion for these extended fasts, like a water fast, for example, or some people will do like religious extended fasts. They're not doing them all the time, but because they started to gain popularity, a lot of people are using these like once a week where they're doing a 36 hour fast or a 48 hour fast once a week. I used to have a client where she did use that like every Monday after um, her weekend, she would have a 36 hour fast starting after her last meal on Sunday. And she always viewed it as her like clean slate of um, after like the weekend, if she had some indulgences, that is one of the biggest reasons why I don't recommend these extended fasts, not only because you're not getting enough of your body's nutrient needs, you're going to lose muscle mass um, every like how often you're using this, but also a lot of people use it as a crutch and almost like a, a yo-yo dieting approach where it's like, wow, I, I drank too much. I ate not great food over the weekend. I'm just going to do a 36 hour fast and like clean slate. And we'll do that very frequently. And it's never actually creating sustainable routines or schedules that make it so that you're able to get the benefits of, inter of the intermittent fast, but also the meals that will support your goals. So I just don't recommend using the extended fast for most people, especially if your goal is weight loss. There's a time and a place with the supervision of someone who actually really knows what they're doing. They're using it for a specific reason, um, like a doctor that's well-versed, nutritionist that's well-versed in using extended fast, but just using it on the occasion is not something that I recommend because it's, it's often just used as a crutch from a weight loss perspective. Okay. Um, so what you eat matters. We talked a lot about that. I hope that's like the, one of the biggest things you get from all of my live streams, all of my videos that yes, intermittent fasting has so many great benefits, whether you're starting from a beginner intermediate, or you're at the advanced level, you've been doing this for years. But what you eat during that eating window, when you actually go to break your fast, matters just as much, if not even more, than the actual fast itself. Because the food that you're putting in, it all breaks down into essentially various chemicals that affect our body on a chemical, biological level, it could cause the unstable blood sugar levels, it could cause you to feel hangry, it could cause you to feel satisfied, it could cause you to maintain muscle mass. Hormonally, what you eat is going to affect your goals. So if your goal is weight loss, um, or if your goal is gut health, you need to make sure that you're still addressing not just the fast, but also your meals. So I don't want to go too much into that in today's live stream because I have so many videos on that. We talked a lot more about that, I think, in the second live stream for this series. So if you guys want to go back to that, you can check it out. Or obviously the six-week summer meal plan. 
talk so much about that, um, especially from the perspective of like um, reducing sugar cravings. So talking about protein needs, talking about fats. I have some really great visuals in here. Visuals are like my favorite thing. I love having visuals and charts to show me like specifically what I need to be doing. <laughs> so I made sure to add a lot of those in the six week summer meal plan with like amounts and um, and like here's a fiber section as well. So definitely if you guys are unsure on how to address what you do when you actually go to break your fast, make sure you grab six week summer meal plan. This one is only available for another week. It's linked down description below. So you guys can check that out. Lots of new recipes. Um, we have 50 brand new recipes. So make sure you check that out. Only available for like seven more days and then it's gone. Okay. Now. Yeah. So that was, again, I have so many nice visuals that I put together for you guys, but my streaming system like went kaput. So I'm sorry that didn't work for obviously like the last live stream of this challenge. So annoying, but I wanted to go through and answer some of your guys' questions. I think I also still have it, have some of your guys' questions from the other one as well. So I can try and answer both, but let me go on here and see if you guys have questions, put three question marks before and after. It's a lot easier for me to find it in the chat that way. Nam Rafni, um, am I able to pin these on here? Can you guys see this? I don't think you can if I were to pin it like that. Okay. Nam Rafni is asking, does exercise put you into ketosis? It can elevate your ketones because you're burning fat as fuel, depending on uh, the type of exercise you're doing, but also what you eat matters. So if you like, let's say, let's say you're an endurance athlete. Or um, if you carbo loaded before your workout, your body is going to be using those carbs first during the workout before it will switch over to burning fat because it is something that burns really fast, but also it's just dangerous to have high blood sugar levels. Your body wants to burn through it first. So you won't necessarily be always going into like that state of ketosis um, when you are intermittent fast or when you are exercising, but it can help to push you into a state of ketosis if you are already eating like a lower carb approach. Yeah, skills many, what happened? It, unfortunately, my streaming software, I was having some issues before this and it started to work and then it like shut off partway through. So if you guys are like just joining in, we have a whole other like 15 minutes of this talk um, where I go over the beginner and intermediate level. So you guys can go back to that. Um, it's just the one right before this. And I have the nice pretty visuals on there that you guys can see. <laughs> Um, okay. So just put your questions in the chat. I'm going to be going through on here. Should you do intermittent fasting during PMS or your period? Um, so the biggest concern with intermittent fasting during your period is that for, I mean, there's not really exact research around this, but there's speculation that during our period, or especially during that one week for a period, our energy needs go up. That's why we tend to have more cravings during that time because we're not used to compensating for eating a, a little bit more during that PMS time to um, compensate for that increased energy need. So that's where we need to make sure that we are eating a little bit more during that time. Now, there's no research, no human research actually showing that as long as you're eating enough during that eating window, that you shouldn't be able to still incorporate like a 12, a 13, a 14, a 15 or 16 hour intermittent fast during that PMS or period time, as long as you're eating enough, your body's nutrient needs. So I have like a PMS protocol um, on like how to make sure that you won't get cravings during that one week for your period. It largely comes down to making sure you're getting adequate protein, of course, but also perhaps increasing your fats during that time, or even possibly increasing some starches, depending on if you're insulin resistant or not. So if you type on the YouTube, Autumn Bates PMS period, maybe like period cravings, I think, well, uh, that video will pop up. But yeah, that's, I personally, pre-pregnancy um, would still intermittent fast, keep my same schedule during the um, like PMS or period time, but I would just make sure I was eating a little bit more to compensate. Okay. So someone's saying a five day fast. Um, Colin says I did a five day fast a while ago. 
it was rough for about 48 hours. And then I just kind of got to this place of comfort. My body felt totally normal. Yeah. So this is the body essentially burning through all those carbs and now switching over to using fat as fuel. So it can feel really good because you are burning fat as fuel. The energy level um, is going to be so stable because you're burning internal fat as fuel sources. But I think that's also why people can start to use these extended fasts as a crutch because they feel so good when they are fasting. And then they're not used to changing their meals to also mimic those same exact feelings of the stable uh, blood sugar levels and using um, fat as fuel. So they go from eating and not feeling great because they're eating the wrong types of foods to then incorporating this fast and feeling awesome because they are now uh, burning fat as fuel just during not eating as all, at all. And then you don't get the benefits of the protein or eating food to support long-term bone and muscle mass and metabolism goals. So that's again, why I just don't recommend extended fast. There's a time and a place, but most people are just not using it in a way that's going to support their long-term goals. Okay. Newbie, is ketchup okay to use as long as it's low carb, little to no sugar, no high fructose, high fructose corn syrup, etc. Yeah. So I'm actually a big fan of using different sauces, using um, different seasonings. Uh, this was actually something that, where, when did I talk about this? I can't remember if it was a video. It actually might be a video coming up soon on how, or no, it was in the intermittent fasting food pyramid video on how it's actually like part of what I built into making sure you guys eat during your meals, because if you are tired of your food, you're not going to eat it. You're going to go back to old habits. Having just regular ketchup, like let's say um, uh, like Primal Kitchen's ketchup, where I think it just uses like apple cider vinegar, tomatoes, etc., doesn't use the sugar. Uh, it's just like tomatoes and it's adding some flavor into there. And it's giving you um, a feeling of variety with your meals, which is so important for longevity, for making sure that you're actually able to sustain what you're doing for the long term. So yeah, it's great. You're looking at the ingredients. You should look at the ingredients to make sure that it is going to have ingredients that support your goals. I just recommend looking for, yeah, looking to make sure it doesn't have added sugar or at the very least that it's like a very, very small amount per an actual realistic serving size. Mm. Uh, okay. So another person is asking, is intermittent fasting a good, a good tool to stick with if my goal is gaining weight and remaining toned at the same time? Yeah. So I'm assuming depends on the weight gain you're discussing. So are you discussing like you want to increase body fat? Are you discussing you want to gain weight from muscle mass? Like I mentioned, um, my goal post-pregnancy is to be increasing muscle mass. I'm going to be talking a lot about that post-pregnancy, but even during that time, I'm going to be using intermittent fasting. I'm just going to be using a 14 hour fast. Now I think it was before the like internet cut out. So it was during the first part of this live stream, maybe go back to that first part of this live stream where I go over that, but I go over how you can change what it is, um, what your goal or what, how long your fast should be depending on what your goal is. So like with an athletic goal, where you're looking to increase your uh, muscle mass, we need to balance out eating a little bit more of the types of foods that support that with also the gut health benefits of intermittent fasting. So that's where like a 12 or 14 hour fast would be more ideal. Um, oops, just jumped to the bottom. Okay. I'm going to see if I can answer some more questions on here. <laughs> Garvin's let's see the baby bump. I actually just posted a great baby bump picture on my community board of me 37 half weeks pregnant at the beach with my husband. So check that out. <laughs> you can throw on there when you think the due date will be. I'm hoping it's like Friday. <laughs> Trevor thinks it's like two weeks from now. Oh, thanks, Lynn. Love all your videos. I found after a year of intermittent fasting, um, since 16.9, but I'm assuming you mean 16.8 or maybe 15.9 works best so I can get in three meals and daily protein needs and finish my eating by 6 p.m. Thank you for all you do. Yeah. So Lynn, she's been doing, uh, she said after a year of intermittent fasting, she's determined that her fasting length that's ideal. I think she means 15, nine. So 15 hours of fasting and nine hours of eating. 
So she's found that sweet spot for her where she's able to fit her protein needs in, balance out her nutrient level while still getting that solid 15 hours of fast. That's still a good amount of fasting to receive a lot of the benefits of the gut health, the mobilizing fat, turning on fat burning mechanisms, especially if you are focused on having those three meals within the eating window. Okay, Joyce, this is a great question. Can I drink coffee with just cream between meals in my eating window or will that hinder weight loss results? Can you recommend a website app to accurately measure protein in different foods per ounce? Yes. Okay. So for the first part, I recommend when possible, trying to have a clean fast between your meals within your eating window. That way your body can just more easily shift back and forth from burning fat as fuel. And I talk more about this in the fat live stream, like where we talk about um, how much fat you should be eating depending on your goals. But if your goal is specifically weight loss, you want to try and burn more of internal sources of fat rather than the fat that you're eating. So if you're just constantly sipping on, even though something that's low insulin level, like with the heavy cream, with your um, coffee, uh, that's still going to be an external source of fat that your body will burn. It's going to burn fat from internal sources and from external sources. Evenly, it sees it as the same but you're not able to specifically prioritize the fat um, from internal sources, from body fat as fuel. So if anything, I'd recommend if you do need to have something, having black coffee, preferably um, decaf at that point, because I'm assuming this might be a little later in the day, having water, having sparkling water, so you can get the additional benefits of really tapping into internal fat as fuel sources. Okay, so if you guys are just jumping in, I'm answering some questions right now. So just try and put four question marks before and after your question. Oh, I forgot to answer the second part. So Joyce also asked about a website or app to accurate measure protein in different foods per ounce. Okay, this is such a good question because I've been actually recently getting a lot of um, people reaching out with like a little bit of confusion around protein in foods and how they think they're getting enough, but they really, really are shy on it. So when you guys are calculating your protein needs, like let's say you've used my um, YouTube video where I help you calculate your protein needs. Again, if you want to do that, you can just type Autumn Bates, how to calculate your protein needs. Or if you just type how to calculate your protein needs on YouTube, it'll pop right up. Um, but let's say you calculate you need 100 grams of protein per day. If you are in the U.S., this is probably a little bit easier of a conversion for you because we're used to measuring things in ounces, not grams. But if you are in other places, pretty much everywhere else where you actually measure things in grams, not ounces, this is where it can get a little confusing because we're talking about 100 grams of protein, not 100 grams of like foods that contain protein, which there's a big difference. So for example, chicken does have protein in it, but it's not 100% protein. So 100 grams of chicken doesn't actually have 100 grams of protein. So you want to make sure when you are looking at like chicken or salmon, beef, Greek yogurt, whatever you're using, you're not basing it off of the grams by weight. You're basing it off of the actual grams of protein that's in that amount you're using. So I know that can sound a little confusing, but always just double check if you're unsure in the beginning. Maybe use some type of app to keep track of your protein amounts and you'll get a better sense of how much protein you really need. Okay, so going back to the app I'd recommend, great one is called Chronometer. I'm usually not a big fan of tracking unless it has to do with protein. So unless it has to actually do with figuring out how much protein you need and making sure you're getting enough and making sure you're understanding how much protein is in certain foods. I have a video as well that shows you like how much, um, a visual of like how much uh, 30 grams of, protein in chicken looks like versus Greek yogurt versus eggs versus cheese that can help to kind of kickstart your journey on understanding protein amounts. That one is called protein is great for weight loss, but you're doing it wrong. That's a huge one. You guys need to check that out. Protein is great for weight loss, but you're doing it wrong. Make sure you go and watch that. You have watched it already. Maybe watch it again. It's a very good one. <laughs> so the app is called chronometer C R O N O M E T R. And that's the only app that I'll use um, when looking up like how much protein is in certain foods or calculating out protein needs for the day. Um, wow, peaceful moments, love your videos. I lost 30 pounds and 
in the past three months and your videos really helped me lose the last 15 pounds. Congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah. It's when you're able to focus on the types of foods you're eating, not just the fast, but also adding in these extra layers, eating foods that really make you feel great, help to support sustainable energy levels, adding in resistance training, all the things we talk about on my channel, in my programs, um, it does make a huge difference and you just feel so much better as well. Uh, Katie, any chance you could share your visuals in a download? I love your visuals. I will try. I uh, perhaps will post this as a blog post. I do have in the first part of this live stream, um, part one before the internet went out, I do have the visuals on there too, but I'll see if I can post it to like a blog post. If I do, I'll post it to the community board to let you guys know. Camille, a day without food would be a sad day for me. Yeah. And also, you know, it's just not ideal because already, especially for women, it's so hard to fit enough protein in because women tend to under eat on protein that it's, it's just going the full day, having that extended fast, not having the protein makes a, it, it really hinders progress with a weight loss goal, fitness goal, really any goal you're looking for. When are you due? Um, technically August 11th, hopefully like right after this live stream. <laughs> so send me good, good vibes. Okay. Another question from Colin, trying to reduce blood pressure quickly. Dropping weight will obviously help, but what other things should I consider to quickly improve those numbers? Stopping all caffeine. Yeah. So always caution around the word quickly because we don't want like sudden drops in blood pressure where that, that can be scary. And especially if you are um, on blood pressure medications, you need to be careful. Um, but some things that have actually been found to really help reduce blood pressure is lowering insulin level. So lowering the fasted insulin level, that's actually one of the things that's been theorized as a major uh, cause of higher blood pressure is high insulin levels. In fact, if you have high blood pressure, you probably have high, high insulin levels. Those things tend to go hand in hand just because high insulin causes the body to hold on to excess water and sodium, which causes the increased blood volume, which then causes the increased pressure because there's more volume. So doing things that help to just naturally lower the insulin response can help to, at least from what has been seen in research, what I've seen with clients can happen quite quickly, actually um, can really affect the blood pressure level. So that would be obviously intermittent fasting, but also again, taking a look at the foods you're eating, not eating overly insulin spiking foods. So it's mostly going to be the high glycemic load foods. Um, so the refined carbohydrates, the sugars, the pastas, all of that. But especially if you already are insulin resistant, you might want to primarily only stick with the low glycemic load. I do have a full blog post on glycemic load. If you want to check that out, just type Autumn Bates glycemic load on um, Google that blog will pop right up. It's a really great resource. I, always I also talk a lot about that in the new six week summer meal plan and the meals that also help to support the lower glycemic load. Um, again, this is only available for another week and then it's gone with all the information and the brand new recipes. Um, so if you guys want to check that out, link down in the description below. But from a nutritional perspective, addressing the things that can actually um, impact insulin can be a really big contributing factor. And really, especially if you are on um, blood pressure medications, you wanna make sure that you're actively talking with your doctor during this time, because there can actually be some pretty quick drops when you do really start to address your um, what you're eating. So, and also the intermittent fast and also the exercise, but especially what you're eating with the insulin level. So if you're on blood pressure meds, really, really, really make sure you're talking with your doctor because they might need to adjust those quite quickly, depending on um, how quickly your body responds. Okay, I'm gonna answer a couple more questions here. This is a great question, Sunshine. Hi, Autumn, I was wondering what you recommend for someone trying to lose 50 to 70 pounds and improve overall health. I know that's a broad question, but just wanted to hear your thoughts, thanks. Yeah. Um, thank you for the question. That's a broad question, but it's, it's a good thing to first be considering on like over I'm, I'm a big believer in first, like getting the, the big picture and then diving into the details, because if you get too lost in the details, you lose the idea of what the big picture is. And then you can kind of just 
be circling around and never actually making progress because you're too hyper focused on one thing and not actually seeing the big picture. So for with the 50 to 70 pound weight loss goal, there's a couple things that we I would recommend for a place to start. First things first, trying to get your body to meals, not snacks. So if we can first get the body to start burning internal fat as fuel, one of the first things we need to do is getting it to just eating meals and not having snacks. Snack When we're snacking, it causes our body to not be very metabolically flexible, so we're not burning fat as fuel very well. So if even if you aren't starting intermittent fasting, just first doing the meal structure, so breakfast, lunch, dinner, that is a great place to begin. And also at the same time, making sure that you're eating enough protein at each of those three meals. So use my protein calculator. Again, go on to YouTube and type um, how to calculate your protein needs. My video will pop right up if you use that phrase. And calculate your protein needs. Understand how you need to split that between those three meals because that combined with the three meal structure can really help to reduce sugar cravings, really help to make it so you're not going to crave the foods that work against your goals. And instead, you're able to... Um, Eat the foods that will help you to better burn fat as fuel. Those are the two biggest places I would start. Uh, I have a lot of videos on obviously protein and intermittent fasting, but I would focus on those first two things first. And obviously I have a lot of recipes like in the six week summer meal plan, that would be a good place to start. So you can start getting foods that will support your goals that are protein emphasized, but just making sure you're not just cutting calories. That is, that's one of the biggest other, the third piece of advice I would say, because if you're just generally cutting calories, you're going to be hungry. You're going to lose muscle. You're going to lower your metabolic rate and it's just not going to work long-term. So make sure you're focused instead on helping to provide your body with the foods that will stabilize blood sugar level, help to maintain muscle mass, help to maintain um, your metabolism, which really first starts with um, getting adequate protein and making sure you have a three meal structure, no snacks. Obviously there's a lot more you can go into. And I have at this point 700, I think in 22 videos on my YouTube channel. And I have meal plans and programs if you wanna go a lot deeper into that and have specific strategies. But those are the two big things to focus on first. Okay, couple, maybe like one more question. Ooh, Maribel's, Maribel's asking about thoughts on continuous glucose monitoring. Yeah, I'm going to be testing that out myself, actually, um, coming up right after pregnancy. So I have a monitor. I want to test it out and do like a month of it to give you guys my real feedback. I have had clients who we've used that as a way to kind of like take it, take their results to the next level. But it's not necessarily something that I would start with if you're in the beginning part of your journey. I will have a full video with more of like a complete review and recap on that in a little bit after I've tested it out, but just wanted to put that on your guys' radar. Oh, Angela, I received my vanilla and chocolate protein powder last week. They're delicious. And the message on the box made me smile. Thank you. Yeah, you guys can see I have my uh, vanilla chocolate protein powder, both zero sugar, um, labor of love. Actually, tomorrow is the one year anniversary of my protein powder, which is nuts. So if you guys want to grab that, you can also find it on my website at autumnlnutrition.com forward slash shop. And I sign every single bag for every single person. A little note just to say like, thank you. So you guys can always see that on your bags when you order them. Speaking of, Ange, um, any news on when your protein powder will be available to order overseas? Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's been proving to be a lot more difficult than what we were expecting because of just like the customs and figuring out taxes and shipping. And we really are like trying to figure that out and, and work with the various systems. But once we once we have it, it, it's definitely something that we are trying to get available as soon as possible, especially for Canada, because I know that we have a lot of community members in Canada and the UK um, and Australia. Those are some of the biggest areas that we need to focus on first but it's just been proving a little difficult with shipping and figuring out taxes and stuff. So we are working on it. Um, sign up for my weekly newsletter. It's free weekly newsletter where I share tips each week. And that's where you guys will be notified when it is actually available for international purchase. So you can go to, I actually have my free newsletter linked in the description below, or you can just go to my website, um, autumn, E-L-L-E, 
nutrition.com and you'll see there's a little tab for free newsletter so you can be um, notified when that does happen. Uh, that <laughs> Haley, that MMC alleviating bloating thing she talks about is scary accurate. Yeah, this was, if you guys know my story on why I first started intermittent fasting, you know that it largely came down to gut health and how horrible the bloating I had, um, that I was experiencing was where literally anything I ate <laughs> would make me just get so bloated where I'd have to lay down because my stomach would hurt so bad. I legitimately did look about seven months pregnant after every meal because I would get so bloated and it was just uncomfortable. It was painful. It was not fun. Um, and that was back when I was eating more frequently and I was having snacks and I wasn't taking advantage because I didn't know about the migrating motor complex because they don't teach that in nutrition school. I took a total of seven years of nutrition schooling or almost like about eight of nutrition schooling and certifications with my master's, my certified clinical nutritionist, my undergrad, all very focused on obviously just nutrition. And we never were taught the migrating motor complex. I really hope they're teaching it now in schools for nutrition, especially because that's what we focus on is the gut and it's just not something that was taught in school. Um, and then once I learned about it, it was like a light bulb went off in my head on how, not that it's easy to get rid of bloating, but how it is so manageable to actually work with your body to prevent bloating. Yeah, more than conquers. Wow, has it been a year since the protein release? Yes, tomorrow. <laughs> It'll be a year. So it's crazy. Cannot believe it's been a year. And um, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but we got some new packaging as well, where it's actually printed straight on the bag, which it looks so good. I love it so much. Just looks like nicer, cleaner. I love it. But you can find that um, my zero sugar protein powder that I use in like oh, my hot chocolate, my zero sugar hot chocolate recipe with the chocolate flavor right there. So good. But you can find it on my website at autumnlnutrition.com forward slash shop. So autumn, E-L-L-E nutrition.com forward slash shop. Okay. So, um, sorry that there was like that technical difficulty today, guys. It was with my stream service that was going on. I'm not sure what was happening, but it just totally cut me off. So thankfully YouTube, I was still able to hop on and go over all this information with you guys, but it is the last week of the summer intermittent fasting challenge. It's also the last week to grab the six week summer meal plan with the over 50 brand new recipes, especially, I know this has been like such a fan favorite. The bell pepper sando. Oh my gosh. This one game changer, like so easy, so good, but it has over 50 brand new recipes, six weeks of meal planning. It's what we've been following during this whole challenge. Strawberry chia jam also so good. Um, but this is only available for a short time, uh, only like seven more days left. So if you guys want to grab it, once you own it, you own it for life and you can find it down the description below. So make sure you grab that if you haven't already, because it is by far my favorite meal plan so far with so many amazing new recipes. Okay, guys, this is, like I mentioned last week of the Summer Intermittent Fasting Challenge. We do have the Fall Challenge, and come, fall challenge coming up very soon as well, which I'm very excited to participate in because I'll be postpartum and I'll be participating it very actively with you guys as well. So make sure if you are not subscribed to my weekly newsletter, you are. Again, you can find that on my website at autumnlnutrition.com. So you can be in the loop on when that next challenge is. But other than that, thank you guys so much for joining in. It's been such a fun challenge. I've had so much fun with you guys. The meals have been amazing. You guys have had so many great questions. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys very soon. <laughs>